Hey there, welcome to another episode of Design Lab in which I look at art and comics and stuff. Today I got a really exciting book. Well, I hope it's exciting. Actually, this is a little different. Normally I'm going to look at books I think that I've already read or recently read or at some point read. This book I have not read yet. I'm, um, I've heard about this book. It's uh, Apparently it's a collection of art from this guy who just owned a bunch of art <laughs> and... Uh, I assume he's kind of rich, but uh, he's got a lot of art. I, I just looked at the list of artists, and I saw names like Basil Wolverton, I think Robert Crumb, Charles Adams, a lot of a lot of names that I like and respect and admire. And I um, yeah, the book's pretty thick; it's about four hundred pages. So I'm going to go through the whole thing and kind of give you my um, take on it, see how it is. Uh, I've heard good things about it, and I hope it it holds up. Here's the cover: The Blighted Eyes. The name came out about ten years ago, and uh, Let's let's blaze on through this thing. I'm not going to read it all. I think there's a lot of text in it too, but I'm just going to look at the art and uh, see. Maybe it'll give you an idea if it's worth buying. So let's take a look. All right, here we go. I think I've seen this image before. I think this is Basil Wolverton, and like maybe from his. Uh, I don't know what it's from. Is it from his Bible uh, art, the Wolverton Bible? Basil Wolverton is one of my favorites. Ooh, I don't know these other artists. Um, this third artist looks kind of like, I'm not sure who it is. Yeah, so uh, no credits yet. So I'm kind of curious how they got the copyright, I mean, the permission to to uh, include all this. I assume they had to get permission because just because you own the art, original art doesn't mean you own the right to reproduce it, as far as I know. Is this Qua Quills? I don't know who this artist is. Cool stuff so far, though. Um, okay, the archives of lost souls. I'm not going to read all this. So there's, it looks like there's an introduction by Robert Williams, who's a pretty well-known artist. I think Robert Williams is found in here too. Oh, well, th there's some Robert Williams art right there. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to read all the history behind this, but uh, there's some more Robert Williams. Uh, so it looks like that. I was I wasn't clear how much text there is in this book and how much it's just art. Is this Todd Hignight? This looks a little. This looks a little like that famous Basil Wharton. Um, <laughs> I forget the contest that he that he won. Uh, all right, so good amount of text. This looks like uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that does Jimbo. Uh, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, it'll come to me in just a second. Gary Pantor, right? I'm looking for a signature. Glenn Bray. So I guess, I don't know who Glenn Bray is. I, I'm sure it's after I, I go through this, I'll actually read the book at some point. But, okay, so here's some Basil Wolverton. Basil Wolverton is one of my all-time favorite artists. And his, his, uh, his, his just like the way they use his ink is so sharp. And yeah, if, you re if you've seen any of the early Mad Magazine, he, he has illustrations there. He did, you know, Powerhouse Pepper, Space Hawk, a lot of great art. Um, yeah, I guess I'm less interested in the text, but I don't know. Maybe I would be. I'll, I'll flip through it and read it at some point. What is this? <laughs> it's like somebody made a, a Flintstones. I've never heard about this. Bedrock City. I should check it out next time I'm in uh, Arizona, if it's still there. Does anyone know about this? So, so far I don't see like any original art. I mean, not, not a lot of original art. These are just like covers of uh, things. Like So uh, again, I don't know how they get the rights to reproduce all this, how that works. Uh, I didn't see a copyright page. I'm sure there's a big uh, copyright page in the very back that I'll get to. All right. Oh, here's some, this is Harvey Kurtzman, another favorite artist of mine. This Hey Look, I think, was a magazine or a comic I haven't read yet that I think he did after Mad. Um, okay. <laughs> so far, I'm not too impressed with this, but let's see where it's going. I, I think they're, this is still like the uh, kind of explaining maybe how this Glenn Bray guy became interested in art and what he grew up on. Uh 
with these guys. Stanislav Stuzowski, Robert Williams, and Jones Sukowski. Uh, interesting. I don't know if this is like more like a coffee table book that you just kind of flip through, or is it a book that you actually you're actually going to read? Oh, uh, this is again Basil Wolverton. I think this may be the the image that there was like a contest. I think Mad Magazine did, or some somebody did a contest, and he he was a you know he was already a professional artist at that point, but he still submitted this and he won, of course, because uh, he's the, the best. <laughs> uh, yeah, these are more Basil Wolverton. Is this Basil Wolverton? I guess it is. Oh, I think this is the, the, the image that that won. I don't know how much he won for that. I'm trying to see a price. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. I'm trying to get to the actual art and away from the text. I thought this was more art. Let's see, how far am I in this? I'm 47 pages into it. What is this? I'm not sure what this is. Captain Steve Wilson. Art right, credits. So here's credits, but no copyrights as far as I can tell. So again, I don't know how they're able to reprint this. If anyone knows a lot of wonderful things about copyrights, feel free to inform me. Uh, this is uh, this is Art Young. I actually read uh, sorry if there's noise in the background. <laughs> there's always noise here. That's that's kind of one reason I've kind of shied away from doing lives because uh, I live in a noisy place, noisy area. Anyways, um, yeah, this is Art Young. I, I'd read his uh, Inferno book. Uh, I think it's called Art Young's Inferno. I read that recently. I don't know if this is from that. His art was okay. I wasn't that impressed with that book, but his art is pretty good. All right. Oh, Charles Adams. So Charles Adams, if you don't know, is the creator of the Adams Family. Not the not the TV show, but the I think the illustrations originally appeared in the New Yorker magazine or other places. But he he's a really wonderful artist. His the way that he does faces is is just incredible, and he he puts so much wonderful expression in it. Yeah. So. Um, was to say, all I can get is bubble, bubble, toil and trial. <laughs> okay, I get it. Who's this? Rick Altergott. I don't know that artist. Looks like something you would see in Mad, though. All right. So this is what I thought the 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 book was going to be, and this is like this is much more interesting to me, I guess, than the text. Uh, I'm not gonna, like I said, look at every picture in detail, but, uh, Carl Barks, Carl Barks is kind of interesting because he, he did, you know, Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge comics from like the 40, I think the, the early forties to the late fifties, I want to say, or maybe even early sixties, somewhere in there. And then he quit. And because, you know, he was work for hire, like most of those artists back then, you know, he wasn't, as far as I know, he wasn't getting any more royalties on any, any Donald Duck or Scrooge comics. So he started doing paintings of, um, he became like a fine art, fine artist of the ducks, the duck legacy. And that, that kind of what he was. And he lived into his like nineties or a hundred doing that. So anyways, who's this? Oh, Carl Barks. I didn't know Carl Barks did the uh, more risque stuff. Or maybe I did. I'm not sure. What year is this from? Yeah, I do like Carl Barks, uh, the Duck comics. Fanographics has reprinted almost all that now of the his his work, and it's uh, as far as I know, it's the first time it's all been reprinted, un unedited and uncensored. Because there's a lot of like politically incorrect stuff that previously they would edit or change things, and I'm glad that they finally reprinted it as it originally was. All right, this Carl Barks, what is this from? 
Bobby Bombi the Zombie, nineteen seventy two. What a what an unusual thing for Carl Brox to have done. I don't understand the origin of this or what it's from. Interesting. Yeah, so like to to reprint this, you gotta you must need permission. <laughs> H.M. Bateman. Don't know this art. See, I'm glad I'm, I'm expo exposing myself to all these artists that I don't know because I'm sure a lot of these artists I do know, but a lot of them I do not. Mark Bayer. That's cool. Very uh, two-dimensional kind of look to it. Mark Bayer. Who's this? Gene Bilbrew. Looks kind of like, uh, almost like Dave Stevens. The guy that created Rocketeer. Malone Blaine. This is fascinating. This, this doesn't look like something you would see. It seems like more something for an art gallery than an actual illustration in a comic or something. But I have no idea. This looks like uh, Charles Burns. I'm pretty sure. Charles Burns has a style that, yeah, it is Charles Burns. Um, you just recognize it right away because this inking is so like pristine and sharp and you know Basil Wolverton has a, a pretty sharp inking too but Charles Burns uses a lot thicker line great artist um, yeah who's this on the upper left oh this looks like uh, the plastic man artist what's his name uh, Jack Cole I think I recognize his style or it could be Will Eisner. No, I think I'm leaning towards Jack Cole. Let's see who it is. Uh, Al Bryant. Oh, I was neither. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. Ernesto Cabral. This is fascinating stuff. I like this. Really, uh, looks like airbrushed almost. El Medico de las Locas. Ernesto Cabral. Yeah, I've never heard of this guy. Nice stuff, though. It looks like cartoony, but it it has like a very airbrushed, uh, heavily painted look. Wait, Al Cap? Where's Al Cap? Oh, it's on the next page. Uh, I haven't read through... I, I would like to read through Lil Abner at, one, at some point. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I think I've only read the first volume... And, uh, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm curious. I've heard a lot of praise for it. Who's this? Uh, Dan Klaus. Dan Klaus, I think, you know, if, if Basil Wolverton has an heir, it may be Dan Klaus in his uh, ability to do, you know, Wolverton did both really realistic stuff like Space Hawk. I mean, the character, the the humans. But then he also does um, like Powerhouse Pepper. And I think Klaus kind of does the same. He'll do like kind of more realistic looking stuff, but then he'll do stuff like this that is not realistic, very exaggerated. And I appreciate that. Yeah, Dan Klaus is wonderful. I, I really like his cartoony, his more cartoony stuff. Uh, what is this? Ron Cobb. Which one's Ron Cobb? I think we're on the next page for that. Oh, this is interesting. Looks, this looks very like 1970s to me, or maybe 1980s, or 1968. Yeah. What is this, Jake? Who's this, Jake? I don't recognize this artist. Looks very much like magazine illustration, though. Jake, Jake, oh, Jack Cole. That is Jack Cole, the creator of Plastic Man. He signs it Jake, or am I on the wrong artist? Wrong cut. No, I think that's him. Does he sign? Yeah, I guess he signs the other ones this way, too. Jake, I've never, I didn't know that. If you don't know Jack Cole, who created Plastic Man, uh, interesting biography. Like, he, he bicycled across the United States, I think, and uh, and then he killed himself. And I don't think he left a suicide note, so we don't know exactly what the details of it's kind of unusual though because you know he's he had such a wonderful sense of humor and then 
mystery. Why did he kill himself? I forget how he killed himself. I feel like like carbon monoxide in the garage or something like that. Uh, yeah, but he, uh, I think, he, I think the illustrations for Playboy, early Playboy, but these, I don't know what these are from. I assume because, you know, magazine illustration probably got paid better than comics. Who's this artist? This looks like, mm, I don't know who this is. It looks very like, almost like Bern Hogarth or something. Oh, Jack, I guess maybe this is Jack Cole too. I think so, we're still in the Jack Cole section. <laughs> All right, this, Chris Cooper. This looks actually, <laughs> I was, I was uh, just talking about how ja um, Charles Burns art is so distinctive and I thought this was Charles Burns, but this isn't. This is um, Coop, Chris Cooper, who I've heard of, but I don't know very well. Uh, Astley David Montague Cooper. Cooper. This is Robert Crumb. Okay, I don't know if I've read this. Yeah, I think I have. I'm pretty sure all the all the Crumb stuff has been collected in the complete Crumb comics. Mm. More Crumb. Crumb is also another, you know, I would say Basil Wolverton heir. Uh, here's Crumb with these other artists. Let's see. We have Clay Wilson, S. Clay Wilson, Victor Moscoso, Rick Griffin, and Robert Crumb. Yeah, they would always do it in the, in like Zap Comics, those those uh what are they called? Where they where they get a, like twenty artists would all work on one page strip and it would be total chaos, but it was there's some some originality in those. It's just they the storylines tended to be very all over the place. Uh, is this Xavier Cougat? Never heard of this. So how far are we? We're only we're only ninety two pages in. Wow, this is a pretty uh, pretty thick book. Jack Davis, another mad artist, very great artist. A lot of Jack Davis. Gene Deitch. I don't know if I know this this artist. I, I feel like there's another artist, Kim Kim Veach. Is that is that right? That I'm kind of recognizing the name, but I don't recognize this art. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> next page. Speak of that, they must be related. Um, I'm not sure how they're related, but let's see, Kim Deach, born 1944. Gene Deach, maybe father or probably father, I assume. Yeah, I think Kim Deach is more of like the. I associated him with like the, maybe the 1980s. Yeah, this is this this line work. It's, uh, <laughs> I mean, this looks like this is all done before computers, so it's not like you can just like throw this down in a few seconds. I think you have to do this kind of manually. It takes forever. Uh, wow. Who is this we're looking at? Drew Friedman. Oh yeah, I've heard of him. Uh, Robert Williams, Bill Ward, J.D. King. Gustav Dore. Wow, that's that's pretty incre incredible that this guy owns an original Gustav Dore cuz those are that's the kind of stuff you see more in the museum in a museum from the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Gustav Dore did a lot of art for like Dante's uh Inferno and things like that and a lot of illustrations. Wow, what's this? This looks like Not sure. Let's see. Pascal Dury. I don't know this artist, I don't think. Looks like an album cover or something. Uh Albert Du Dubu. <laughs> Who is this guy? Uh 
Uh, it's from more Mad Magazine stuff. This may be like from one of the first issues of Mad. Bill Elder. <clears throat> yeah, Mad Magazine. Early, I, I've read a lot of the stories, but I haven't read all of them. And one of these days I want to read through like all the early Mad Magazines. I think the first, I forget how many, 17 or 23 issues or something were more in a comic format. And then at one point they switched to more of a magazine format and uh, I'm more interested in the early stuff, but uh, Harvey Kurtzman was really running it back then. It's pretty great. Uh, Virgil Finlay, this is pretty, uh, Virgil Finlay is a pretty great art, like, it's pretty amazing, this guy's collection, <laughs> to to own all of this. This is like thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of art. Yeah, I'm I'm curious to hear how this guy acquired all this art and what he's doing with it. <laughs> Seems like he needs to open a museum. This is like no small amount of art. <laughs> These look almost like photos, but they're they look like they're altered by um um by like a filter or some <laughs> image filters. Wow. Coco, you okay? Coco. Dog's breathing heavily. I don't know if she's dreaming or what. Um, wow, what's this? What's the credit? What are we looking at? Britney Spears. I think we're on the next page. What is this? Ernst Fuchs. Oh, he's a... He's a kind of a well-known, kind of a fine artist. Wow. It's kind of a good sampler to like expose yourself to a lot of new artists. I feel like that's what I'm like. I feel like I want to, what I want to do is like write down the names of the artists that I like the most and kind of check out, get a book, entire book on just the, those artists. Everett Garatz. This looks like, yeah, I don't know this artist. Justin Green. I've heard of him. These look like, uh, they don't look like original. I think these are kind of like what you see nowadays. Like they're more like an homage rather than something that was actually used for uh, book covers. That was Rick Griffin, famous concert artist. He would do like these comics sometimes, but they, they wouldn't really have much of a story to them. They would just be like one page more to illustrate like his, more to like to provide something to illustrate rather than an actual narration, an actual story. This looks like uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, the guy that does the wizard. Uh, Cheech, is it called Cheech the Wizard? Yeah, the backgrounds in Rick Griffin's art is always, it, it seems like almost like part of the, like you can't have a Rick Griffin like illustration with that, like these kind of backgrounds at some point. All right, Bill Griffith, creator of Zippy the Pinhead. This looks like... Uh, 1974. I like Bill Griffith's art, but I feel like nowadays his art is a little less, it's not as, um, I need to read that, that biography that he did of Vernie Bushmiller, but, uh, I like his art. I like his storytelling. It's very, not everyone likes it. Uh, now what's this? Can't say I recognize this artist at all, so I'd be surprised if I know them. 
It's kind of like maybe Drew Friedman, but I don't think so. It's Jeffrey Hayes. No, I don't know that. Like a Rory Hayes. They must be related. Oh, I've seen this. This uh, this bear, I've seen this before. I don't know where. <laughs> Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I have no idea. No, I've seen this this comic. I have no idea where I've seen this though. <laughs> I, I I've read this story. I, I recognize it. It's been re reprinted somewhere. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> He's just more, he always seems more concerned with like mood than an actual narrative. Like, stop. stop. All right. We're 160 pages into this thing. <laughs> this goes on. This, yeah, this should be a museum. This guy's got so much art. Plastic Sam. Uh, this is uh, Love and Rockets. I've I've tried to read Love and Rockets, and everybody like it's one of those nineteen eighties comics that everyone praises, but I've never been able to get into it. And I like the art. I mean, the art looks good, but I think maybe the problem is I started with the first issue, and I've heard that that isn't necessarily the best place to start. But I've just never been able to get into Love and Rockets. It's one of those things like Mouse. The it's another nineteen eighties comic I've never managed to really read because I just. Uh, I've tried. <laughs> um, I mean, I like their art. It's great art, like very uh, cool looking line work. And maybe I should try some of their more recent stuff. Uh, George Harriman. George Harriman is one of my favorite, probably like in my top, top three artists of all time. He's just uh, incredible. What is this? George. Oh, right. I thought George Harriman did this. I'm like, what? No, Ryan Heshka. I never heard of this guy. Cool art. Oh, very nice. I like this. This looks like an album cover. What does it say? Hirschfield. Or wait, Hirsch. Yeah, Hirschfield. This is, uh, what's the guy's name? Al Hirschfield? Yeah, Al, Al Hirschfield. I don't know where I know his name from, but I, I do know him from somewhere. <laughs> I just took a quick break and you didn't even notice. This artist looks like um, a little like Benjamin Mara or maybe the style. Benjamin Mara is one of my favorite artists, contemporary artists that uh, he seems like he would be in this book. I, I feel like Glenn Bray has to have some Benjamin Mara in his collection somewhere. <laughs> um, but I don't think it's in this book because uh, Benjamin Mara is more recent. If you haven't seen my interview with Benjamin Mara, go check it out on my channel. He's my channel, my channel. What's this? And this is uh, EC Comics, or is this an? Looks like an original, not like a, not like an homage. Who did the art though? Looks kind of like uh, oh, Gasly. So it's Graham Ingalls, Gasly Graham Ingalls. Yeah, Graham Ingalls. They gave it, they had names like uh, kind of like Jack King Kirby, but in the EC Comics in the fifties they would uh. They would come up with names like that, Castle Graham Ingalls. Cameron Jamie, I don't know this artist. Russ Johnson, Jan Daniel Johnston. Daniel Johnston, isn't he a musician? Andrew Jones. This looks kind of familiar, who's this? Ota Katie. I like it. This is pretty cool art. It's like poster art. Hank Ketchum. I would kind of read sometimes Dennis the Menace in, as a comic strip growing up. and uh, it, it was like a one panel. Was, I, I, I have to say I'm not a big fan. <laughs> uh, I like his art though. It, this is pretty cool looking art. Very 1950s style. No, this is 1952. Um, but the ones I read anyways, maybe they weren't Hank Catcher, maybe they're some other handoff artist. I wasn't a fan. 
gasoline alley it looks like down here. I never really got into gasoline alley either. <laughs> all right, Bernie Krigstein is one of my all-time favorite artists. He was a EC artist as well, and uh, he has a he has a famous I think it's called Master Race, a famous comic about uh, after the after the Holocaust in in like New York, some Nazi is living, and um, it's pretty famous. I, I want to reread that because I had just read. Malcolm Gladwell's book, Revenge of the Tipping Point, in which he asserts that the Holocaust wasn't referred to commonly as the Holocaust until the late 1970s, thanks to a, a TV show called Holocaust. So I want to see if in that that famous Bernie Krigstein comic, if it's referred to as the Holocaust or if it's not. But yeah, I mean, some people still refer to it then, but he's saying that, that was Gladwell's argument is that the majority of people didn't refer to the Holocaust as the Holocaust until like the late seventies. This looks like Graham Engels again. Oh, Bernie Krigstein. Yeah. Krigstein's artist is, he's incredible. He was like doing so much better art than should have than like, than you had any right to expect from comics at the time, considering how little they paid and how poorly like the rights that they had access to <laughs> 1954 AD. He signed it. It's funny. Uh, this is uh, Harvey Kurtzman, right? Is this the this is the first? Looks like a recreation of the first issue of Mad Magazine. Some kind of recreation painting. Yeah, Harvey Kurtzman. I need to read more Kurtzman in general. He's just uh, he's he's such a great writer and artist. <laughs> There's so much personality in those Mad Magazines. Those early Mad Magazines, so ahead of their time. Yeah, I guess he did another magazine called Help. I haven't read any of that at all. And he would do he would also do war comics and like they're some of the best war comics ever. Um look at these covers though. They're just so considering like most of the audience for this was probably kids, it's just like the line work and the the abstractness of his art is kinda like the it's surprising because just like the way Kirby's popularity as Kirby's art became more kind of abstract in the late sixties, early seventies. And just like the fact that it was still being mostly read by kids is just astonishing. This is a, this looks like a mad magazine too, but what, what is it? Who is this artist? Oh, there's more Harvey Kurtzman. Maybe this isn't mad. I don't know what it's from then. U S crime. Yeah, I gotta read more Kurtzman. He's he's incredible. Stanley Link. <laughs> Ching Chow. <laughs> Look at this this very Asian font. What is it? What year is this from? I, I gotta know. Ching Chow from nineteen forty four. Okay, so during World War Two when you when you're when it's okay to be racist. <laughs> Guys climbing the mountain. <laughs> he gets to the top of the mountain, he sits and then it explodes and it says, It is well said, sweet is the memory of past labor. <laughs> I feel like he just took some fortune cookie and wrote it in. <laughs> uh, Lippert Pictures. So we don't know who the artist is for this. Cool looking dinosaur though, right? Is George Harriman. Wow, what's this? This looks very modern. This has to be at least in the 90s or maybe 80s. 2006, 2006. Travis, Travis Louie, never heard of him. Neat looking stuff though. Jay Lynch, I don't know this artist. Looks very like animated, like like. Never heard of Jay Lynch. Anyone? Wad. <laughs> so even Mad gets parodied. <laughs> what me free? <clears throat> Don Martin. I used to have a, a huge book of Don Martin's 
like complete mad illustration. I think it was actually two volumes. It was enormous. And uh, I think I like his, his art more than I like his, his jokes. I feel like they don't, they don't always deliver, but I like his art. It's very, what, one of the key things that I associate with Matt is his art. Ever Moulin. Wait, let me see this. This Mike Magnola? Yeah, it is. I was just talking with somebody about Hellboy the other day because I've, I tried to read the Hellboy comic at one point and I like his art, but I just wasn't that interested in the comic. Maybe it's because I, I'm not a big fan of the, the horror genre in general, but, um, I've not been able to get into Hellboy, the comic, and I've never seen the movies either. I know they're pretty popular, but what can I say? Alan Odell. I like this. I really like thick line, uh, artists that, that work like in this style of like having a really thick line. Um, I associate it with, you know, Wolverton, Jack Kirby, uh, sometimes, sometimes crumb, not always crumb. Uh, Mike Allred really is one of the modern adherents of it that does it really well. Alan Odell. This is cool. This volume just goes on and on. Gary Pantor. Gary Pantor is somebody I need to read. Like I've, I'm not sure if I'll like him or not. <laughs> like I, I see some of his art and I think cool, but then I see some of his pages and there's just so much text and the text is really tiny. And I'm like, this doesn't seem like it would be enjoyable to read, but I've heard good things about Gary Pantor. And I, at some point I want to check him out. I actually have the, his, um, his Dante volumes, uh, Inferno and I think Paradiso and maybe Purgatorio. Gary Panter. This is like the most uh, realistic looking stuff I've seen by him. Virgil Parch. I know that name. Where? What has he done? He looks, is he like a New York artist? Oh, wait, wait, wait. This looks familiar. I feel like he did a comic strip. Yeah, I, I know this name and this artist from somewhere. I think he did like maybe New Yorker illustrations too. Who's this? Mervyn, Mervyn Peak, the, the the author. <laughs> Sorry, there's a, like a motorcycle going by. Adding to the ambiance, Mervyn Peak. So as far as I know, the only Mervyn Peak is the uh, the author that did that uh, that fantasy novel series, the uh, Gorman. Was it called Gormengast? Which um, I haven't read, but I wasn't aware that he did art at all. That's that's interesting. Um, what we, oh wait, so this is not Mervyn Peak. <laughs> this is Mervyn Peak. Okay, and uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Savage pencil. Is that somebody's somebody's uh nom de plume? It's pretty cool looking stuff. Looks almost like tattoo art. Uh, this is pretty <laughs> nice stuff. Who are we looking at right now? Norman Pet Pettingill. Never heard of this guy. Who's this? I also interviewed uh, Cameron Forsley a few years ago. He's a wonderful artist. I think he's now based in New Mexico. He still does tattooing, but he also does illustration. Um, yeah, really wonderful artist. Norman Pettingill. Yeah, totally new name to me. But a lot of these, uh, a lot of the art is just sitting off so many um, kind of like similar artists that I recognize the influence on. Peter Pontiac. What is this? This looks like... Wait, 
It's our signature. Powers. Is that Tim Powers? Is that an artist? Richard Powers. All right. Yeah, I don't really know him. George Price, Roger Price, Jacques Pion. Richard, comma, Bruno. Bruno Richard, okay. I <laughs> uh, don't know this artist. Antonio Rubino. I feel like I know this guy. The name is just... Uh, style looks very, very familiar. Johnny Ryan. Oh, Johnny Ryan. <laughs> Johnny Ryan, is, he's a... Uh, He's just such a, yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely one of the, an heir of one of these guys. He's, he, he sets out to offend and he, and he does so quite well. I like Johnny Ryan. Some of his stuff more than his others. I haven't, like I tried reading Prison, Prison Pit. It didn't really interest me, but sometimes he's incredibly funny. Um, yeah, Johnny Ryan's, <laughs> he's out there. This looks like a, a parody of the Robert Crumb comic, A Short History of America. So let's see. Boring, boring, boring. Fucking awesome. <laughs> Very well done, Johnny Ryan. I, would, I feel like this should be a poster. I want, I want, I want to own this poster. <laughs> Charles Schneider. This looks like another... Similar to Charles Burns, but not quite Charles Burns. <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen many Batman covers like this. We are 283 pages in of 404. <laughs> I assume though there's a lot going to be a lot of copyrights at the end, so I don't think it's entirely 400 pages. Gilbert Shelton. Gilbert Shelton is, of course, the, uh, am I, wait, am I mixing, he, is he the creator of the Fantastic Free Freak Brothers, or am I misremembering that? Uh, no, I'm pretty sure I recognize this style. Yeah, this is Gilbert Shelton. The other ones, these are Mark Smeets, okay. Mark Smeets. I was just wondering if he owns any tin, any, uh, I feel like he, he doesn't, I feel like tin tin art is so expensive and rare. It's like one of those things that nobody owns unless you're really super rich. Spain. Cliff Starrett, don't know this artist. Juke Swart, I, I know this artist. What has he done? He did, uh, I feel like I read some science fiction book by this guy. Let me see that again. Wait. That's pretty trivia. Huh. Stanislav Zukowski. Oh, we saw him earlier. This guy looks definitely more at the kind of fine art end of the spectrum. Uh, not that I'm knocking that. I'm just saying that he looks like his, he can do like one painting and make a few thousand dollars off of it, at least. Roy Tompkins, John Stanley. John Stanley, Little Lulu, one of the, uh, wait, John Stanley was the artist or the writer on Little Lulu? I, I'm confused, I'm confused. Um, anyways, I like Little Lulu. Ringo. <laughs> Pretty nice. How would you like to have that as your life shade? <laughs> Is your uh, your chandelier? I mean, is this actually in uh, in Glenn Bray's house? 
I think it was Thomas Pynchon's uh, house. I don't know if you've seen the, the illustration for the cover of Gravity's Rainbow that Frank Miller did. It's not very, uh, I mean, it's so simple. It's not that dramatic. I mean, it's not that remarkable, but it uh, reminds me of that. All right. Oh, Chris Ware's in here. I didn't know Chris Ware had any art out in the public. I feel like it's, I feel like he's so obsessively detailed that he must like hang on to every piece of art that he owns, but I guess not. Byron Werner. This looks kind of cool. Ogden Whitney. <laughs> Herbie's, uh, Herbie's such a, supposedly Herbie's Alan Moore's favorite comic. I've read, I read through it all at one point and I enjoyed it, but it's like, uh, <laughs> I love the art. I think more than the story, the stories are just like, yeah, the, some of them are okay. Some of the dialogue's kind of funny, but I think the way that for the most part, Ogden Whitney does, uses a very like realist, realistic style, but then he has a few characters like Herbie that are just very cartoony and silly. Robert Williams. Skip Williamson. I don't know this guy. I was wondering if he owns any, um, I'm blanking on the name of the artist. I was just talking about this guy the other day. The guy that did, uh, ah, something city. What's it called? Soft city. But I can't remember the artist's name, but it looks like something that you would expect Glenn Bray to own <laughs> copies of. Who's the artist of Soft City? Somebody tell me in the, the comments. Gay and Wilson, S. Clay Wilson. Are Gay and Wilson and S. S. Clay Wilson related? I wasn't aware of that, if they are. Basil Wolverton. I'm pretty sure, well, I don't know, I'm not sure, but this looks like something from his, maybe his Bible comic or his uh, illustrated Bible. Yeah, this is Space Hawk. So this is like m the more realistic side of Wolverton. Very 1950s kind of look. I think actually maybe it was 1940s that he, he did it. Mm. Wally Wood, oh, another great uh, mad artist and comic artist, superhero artist, really daredevil and things like that. I like Wally Wood's art a lot. He's really, uh, he's another artist I want to read more of. Jim Woodring. I wonder if he owns any Jack Kirby art. Quite young. Now I'm curious about who this Glenn Bray person is because I feel like he must be very rich um, to own all these these artists. Who's this Bob Zool? This looks like Chris Ware almost in the you know like diagrams. I don't know this artist Bob Zool. Cool looking stuff though. All right, I guess we've reached the end of the art. Oh, there's more. I still got a few more pages, but. So let's see, this is the copyright. Oh wait. So it says the blighted eye, copyright 2014. All images copyright the respective artist or estate. But does that mean they had to ask for it or they just kind of did it? <laughs> and then after the fact, there's only a few that they say used by permission. All rights reserved. I don't know how they got permission to do it. <laughs> I 
All right, so that's the end. <coughs> well, I think, uh, I don't know, was, I'm kind of curious. I'm going to read the intro, or at least skim through the intro. But I think, uh, yeah, there's some cool-looking art in here that I'd never seen from artists that I knew and artists that I don't know. And I'm kind of just most curious about the artists that I don't know. And it kind of reminds me that I want to read more Wally Wood and uh, Harvey Kurtzman, I guess. So, um, yeah, what do you think of this book if you have it? I haven't, I don't have the actual physical book. I just had this, this file I found online and um, I think on Library Genesis. And uh, yeah, so uh, um, I, think, I think next time I'll look at a book that I actually know, but this was an interesting kind of experiment. I just wanted to try something new. So um, The Blighted Eye. I think it retails if it's still available for, I want to say about 40 bucks or something. So I doubt I'll ever have a copy, but I, I'm glad that I found this digital copy and took a look at it. So uh, see you in the next video.